Hi there, it's Kristen from Quebecca, and today we'll be making some springtime window clings using Silhouette's new printable window cling material. Most of this project happens in Silhouette Studio, and I'll walk you through setting up the window cling print and cut files with both PNG files and SVG files. So you'll be able to make this project with either the free version or the premium versions of Silhouette Studio. I'll be using the Spring Whimsy Flowers graphic set that you can find in my shop to make the window clings, and I'll include a link to that below. When you purchase this set, your download includes SVG files with border cuts, as well as PNG files and trace files in two sizes. The free version of Silhouette Studio doesn't work with SVG files, so first I'll show you how to design the window clings with PNG files. I mentioned earlier that this set includes PNG files in two sizes. The first is a grouped file that can be made into stickers or cardstock elements for planners, scrapbook pages, and other paper crafts. PNG files are resolution dependent, meaning that if you plan on printing them, you can't really size them up too much from their original size before the images start to lose their crispness and get all pixelated. With that in mind, I included a set of larger PNG files, and these files are sized to 6 inches on their longest side at high resolution, so you have a lot more flexibility with what you can do with them. The larger files are in the folder named PNG Large, and I'll click into that. You'll see three subfolders here, Images, Trace Files Stamp, and Trace Files Sticker. The stamp trace files are coordinating trace files for the images that cut right around the images without any margin. So if you don't want to have any white space around your die cuts, you'll want to use these files. The sticker trace files, on the other hand, do leave some padding around the images when cut. So if you want a little bit of white space around the images, these are the files that you'll want to use. I want to have some white space around the vinyl cling images, so I'll be using the sticker trace files. But first, I want to open one of the images. Just as an example, I'll click File, then Open, and open the Coordinating Stamp Trace file from the Trace Files Stamp folder. The trace file is solid black, which will make it easier to create a clean trace. To trace the file, I'll go to the top right menu and open the Trace window. Then I'll click on Select Trace Area and click and drag over the area I want to trace on the artboard. When I do that, a shaded area will appear around the area that I want to trace so I can see exactly where the trace boundaries will be. After I finish selecting the trace area, you'll see yellow areas appear. This is the default area that we'll trace, but we want to make sure that the whole shape is filled, so we'll need to make some adjustments. I'll go over to the Trace Options area and unclick the High Pass Filter box, and when I do this, you'll see that the whole shape is now filled with yellow. Sometimes after you do this, you might still notice areas that aren't filled in with the yellow, and in those cases you can go over to the trace options and increase the threshold until those areas are filled in. But I think that this result is pretty good, so I'm going to go with it. You have a few trace options, and for this I'm going to click Trace, which is the top option. If you only want to trace around the outside of the shape, you can choose the Trace Outer Edge option, but I want to cut any interiors of the images where there's white space too, so Trace is the way to go. After I click Trace, you can see a red border appear around the shape. This is our cut file. I'll drag the trace file off to the side so you can see this better. Then I'm going to click on the cut file, copy it by pressing Ctrl or Command plus C, and I'll click over to the document where the image is and paste the cut file by pressing Ctrl or Command plus V. To get the two files to line up perfectly, I'll first click and drag to select both the image and the cut file. Then I'll open the Align window from the top right menu, and first click Align Center to align the two horizontally, and then Align Middle to align them vertically. Now we have a perfectly aligned print and cut file, and we can open the Registration Marks window from the top right menu, choose our Registration mark style, I'm choosing Type 1 since I have a Cameo, and print and cut the flower. I wanted to walk you through creating a cut file from a trace file with one of the stamp trace files, just so you can see how exact the cut files that you can create from the trace files can be if you don't want to have padding around your print and cut images. But for this project, I want some padding around the images, so I'm going to click and drag the cut file that we created off to the side and delete it. Then I'm going to open the coordinating sticker trace file, which is what we'll be using for this project. The process to create the cut file from the trace file is exactly the same as earlier, and we'll quickly walk through it one more time. 
After I open the sticker trace file, I'll open the trace window from the top right menu. Then I'll click select trace area and click and drag over the area that I want to trace on the artboard. The default trace area, which is everything that's filled in with yellow, isn't really what we're going for, so I'll make some adjustments by clicking on the high pass filter box to uncheck it. When I do this, the whole shape fills with yellow, which is what we want. If you still see some stray areas that aren't filled, you can increase the threshold to fill in those areas, but this is good as is. I'll click trace to trace the shape and a red outline will appear. This is our cut file. I'll drag the trace file over to the side so you can see it better. And then I'll click the cut file to select it and press Ctrl or Command plus C on my keyboard to copy it. After that, I'll click back over to the image file and paste our newly created cut file by pressing Ctrl or Command plus V on my keyboard. To align the image and cut file, I'll click and drag to select both, and then I'll go to the top right menu and open the align window. After that, I'll click align center to align the two horizontally, then align middle to align them vertically. We're almost set now. I just want to scale this down a bit in size. So I'll click and drag to select both the image and cut file if they aren't already selected, and I'll open the scale window from the top right menu. I'm not able to use the lock aspect option here, and I'm pretty sure it's because one of the selected items is a PNG image and not an SVG or cut file. So I'll just use the percentage option. I want to scale these down to 65% their original size, so I'll type 65 into the percentage box and hit the apply button. Finally, I'll move the finished print and cut files to just inside the registration marks. You can repeat this process for each image that you want to use in the set, and after you've done it a few times, the process goes really quickly. Next, I'll show you how to set up the print and cut file for the window clings using SVG files, which you can use if you have any of the premium versions of Silhouette Studio. I'm using the regular designer edition. The SVG versions of the files are grouped files, so first I'll open the Spring Whimsy SVG sticker cuts file, which is what we'll be using for our window clings. I'll open the stamp cuts version of the file next, just so you can see the difference. The SVG files include all of the images in the set grouped in one file, along with their coordinating cut files, which are the red outlines around each image. I'll close the stamp cuts file now that you've had a peek, and we'll head back over to the sticker cuts file. Next, I'll open the registration marks window from the top right menu and choose type 1 from the drop down menu. If you want to create stickers or elements for paper crafts, at this point you could simply print and cut and you're good to go. But we want our images to be larger since we're making window clings. I'm not sure how many of the images will fit inside the registration marks on one page, so I'll go to the top left menu and choose Object, then on Group, so the grouped items will be separated. You can see the gray boxes appear around the individual items when I do this. You may need to ungroup more than once depending on how Silhouette Studio groups the files. After that, I'll click and drag to select just the top row of images and cut files. Then I'll press Ctrl or Command, click on the artboard and drag over the spring image and cut file to add that to the group of items that are selected. These are the items that I want to make window clings from. While everything is selected, I'll press Ctrl or Command plus C on my keyboard to copy the items. Then I'll open a blank document and paste the items by pressing Ctrl or Command plus V. After that, I'll open the registration marks window from the top right menu and select Type 1 from the style dropdown. I'm going to save the file at this point so I don't forget, because I want to be able to print and cut more sheets of window clings if I want to later on. Before we get to scaling the images, I want to show you one of the awesome things that you can do with SVG files in Silhouette Studio. First, I'll click and drag to select one of the flowers. Then I'll go to the top menu and choose Object, then Ungroup to ungroup the image from its coordinating cut file. After that, I'll choose Object, then Ungroup again, and you can see when I do this that small boxes appear around both the top and bottom of the flower image. If you have a more complex image, you may have to ungroup additional times to get to this point. Okay, so let's say that you have a different color scheme that you want to work with, or you want this flower to be a different color. Click on the top of the flower to select it. Then open the fill color window from the top right menu. From this point, you can click on any color swatch to change the flower's color. You can do this with any of the separate parts of the images, so you can change the stem colors and middles of the flowers too. And if you open the Advanced Options window, you have even more flexibility with color. 
The slider on the right will make the current color either lighter or darker, depending on which way you slide it. And you also have options for inputting the red, green, and blue values or the hex value of the color. You can change the transparency too. There are so many possibilities here that you can customize the images to fit pretty much any color scheme. I'm just going to use the slider to lighten the purple shade that I chose for this flower. I want to add the purple somewhere in the word spring too, so I'll ungroup that image and cut file until boxes appear around each individual letter. The green in the letter N doesn't appear in any of the other images that I've chosen, so I want to change that. I want to go in proper rainbow order, of course, so first I'll click on the letter G. You can see in the fill color window on the right that when I do this, the hex value, which is in the form field where the little pound sign is, automatically fills with the code for this particular color. I'll click into the form field and highlight that code. Press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy it, then go back to the artboard and click the letter N to select it. Then I'll head back to the hex code form field, highlight the code for the color, and press Ctrl or Command plus V to replace it with the code for the letter G color. After that, I'll press the enter button while the cursor is still in the hex code form field to change the color, and you can see the N change to the same color as the G when I do this. Next, I want to make the G the same purple color as the flower, so I'll select the flower and copy the hex code from the form field in the fill color area. Then I'll click to select the G and click and highlight the hex code for the color in the form field and press Ctrl or Command plus V to replace it with the code for the purple color. And I'll press the enter button on my keyboard to make the color change. Pretty neat, right? These are the only colors that I want to change. So now I'll just regroup the flower, then the word by clicking and dragging to select the files and pressing Ctrl or Command plus G to group them. This makes the files easier to move around later. The final thing that we want to do before we print and cut the window clings is to make the images larger. Unlike PNG files, SVG files are resolution independent, which means that you can size them up as much as you want without the image losing its crispness and detail. First, I'll specify the dimensions for the spring word, since it's already scaled a little larger than the flowers. I'll do this by typing 5 into the width field and making sure that the lock aspect ratio box is checked. Then I'll press the apply button to apply the changes. I'll move that down to the bottom of the page for now, and next I'll resize the flowers. I want to scale all of the flowers by the same amount, so I'll click and drag to select them all, and then I'll type 225 into the scale percentage field. After that, I'll click the apply button to make the changes. Now I just need to try and fit all of the images and cut lines inside the registration marks on the page. I'll make good use of the rotate tool to help me do this, and you can open that window by going to the top left menu and selecting Object, then Rotate, then Rotate Options to open the window on the right. I ended up only being able to fit four of the five flowers onto the page, but I can always make a second page if I want more cling images later. I'll save the file again, and now we're on to the really fun part. I'll be printing and cutting the page that we just made onto Silhouette Window Cling Material, which is available in both clear and white. I'll be printing and cutting a page from each so we can see results for both. This material is only safe for use with inkjet printers, so I'll print these on my inkjet and then cut them using a blade depth setting of 2 and a speed setting of 7 with just a single cut. Okay, so I've just print and cut the images and everything went smoothly with both the printing and the cutting. I was a little worried that the ink was going to smear after I printed it, but it didn't budge at all. It was set pretty much immediately after the page printed, although I did leave it for a minute before doing anything with it just in case. Let's check out the clear window clings first. I don't have a window handy, so I'll just use this picture frame to stick the clings on. The cling material peels off easily and it sticks to the glass really well and removes easily too. The colors in these particular images are a little bit on the light side for the clear cling material, and I would recommend using colors that are brighter and are darker if you're making clear clings. Okay, so I'll peel these off the glass and stick them back onto the sheet of window cling, and then we'll check out the white window cling results. These peel and stick just as easily as the clear ones, and the colors stand out much more on the white cling material since it's opaque. Overall, I'm really happy with how these turned out, and I think that the Silhouette printable window cling material is pretty darn awesome. Think of all the custom designs that you can make. Window clings for any holiday, seasonal clings, decorations for birthdays, other special occasions. There's so much that you can do with this material. 
You can find a full list of supplies used in this project in the description area below or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbeka.com. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more seasonal and holiday projects like this one, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.